Welcome, I'm Ned, your Karma Guide, and this month we are exploring forgiveness in our own body life sanctuary area. This is an online area where people can come together from around the world and explore different aspects of spiritual practice that might help transform and embody them a little deeper into the richness that is here in life. And I'd love to take a specific angle on forgiveness this month which is around using it as a key step towards finding acceptance. I sometimes notice that acceptance is a mental exercise and that actually people don't really move through and into full acceptance. There's a little bit maybe of anger or resentment or even a resignation that can be left when the forgiveness part is not moved through. And this is really important in our law of attraction practice and how we shift our karma. Because when we hold on to these energies of these slightly heavier feelings without really accepting something uh, through forgiveness, we can find ourselves not really manifesting in that clean energy and shifting our karma in the way that we might like. And I wanted to touch on a little bit of how sometimes we might notice that we need to forgive in order to come to acceptance. So I'm currently traveling, revisiting family and friends for the first time in over three years and noting those parts of us that expect each other to be what we were three years ago and many things have happened in the world and to each of us over that period of time. And expectations are often what leads us into a form of judgment because an expectation is judging the way that someone is going to be is a certain either pre-existing way that they have behaved or that we'd like them to behave in a way that maybe they've never behaved, won't behave because it's not who they are. And so expectations are quite a good idea of when we are coming into a place of judgment. And ultimately it's judgment that creates the requirement for us to try and forgive. We might find ourselves judging in a variety of different ways. Perhaps it's that we complain quite a bit. Uh, maybe we're nitpicking and being really critical about something. Or we could be projecting quite a bit of problems that we think others maybe don't have. You know, that, that classic moment of forgetting that other people's struggles might not be present on their face. Might not be obvious for us to know. It could also be that we judge others for how they behave in a situation, how we think that they should behave in that situation, and why they should behave in a different way. And we can get a bit rigid in our opinions, maybe even sometimes feeling quite righteous about those opinions that we have. And that criticism, that, that kind of not ever really being good enough can translate into either our expectations of others or also of ourselves. And when we're moving into that, that criticism, it can make us feel either that we are not worthy or that we're superior, there's inferiority. And all of these things in different thought processes and emotional states become a way in which we are not open to be more empathetic and more compassionate and provide greater support to people who may be different from ourselves. So these feelings can then sometimes give rise to feeling that others have power over us or that maybe we're resentful for the amount that we've given or overshared towards others. All of these feelings, all of these behaviors can be signs that we need to move through some level of forgiveness. And that forgiveness is probably going to be a two person, if not many more, part. So who it is that you need to forgive well, it's normally easier to see a scenario where someone has done wrong and they need forgiving. You know, the classic is the murderer needs to be forgiven for having killed um, the person's child, say. And, you know, the parent has to find some way of finding forgiveness for this person for taking their child's life. Now, this is, you know, a very uh, challenging and often many uh, of us find this a very hard concept to get our head around and we do hear of these extraordinary stories where parents or loved ones have managed to find that forgiveness of the person who took that action. That forgiveness doesn't mean that we don't condone their behavior, that we, that we don't say you have to go and 
pay for your behaviors, right? We still need accountability. And accountability of our feelings is really what this is about, is that when we really account for our behavior and the way that we feel, we can discover that we need to move through and forgive ourselves for these feelings, for these thoughts, and for these behaviors that maybe we have about how others should behave, but also of others and how they should behave. So it's easy to begin with forgiveness for another person because often we can see the way the story plays out before we can actually manage to shift our own perspective and forgive ourselves. So the first thing we want to look at is who are the parties involved so that we can have a full list of people that we might want to think about forgiving. And then my personal experience and that that I witness of my clients is that it's really important that we move through understanding the people and all the other players in the scenario that we want to forgive so that we also look towards that forgiveness of ourselves as a part of this journey because what I find when I stop and ask myself to forgive I move into more than acceptance I move into a place of really opening and expanding the heart to offer even more to another person whilst fully upholding boundaries fully standing in my power and ensuring that I take care of myself with that full heart as much as for other people so what happens when we move through forgiveness and self-forgiveness is that not only do we expand our heart to hold more for others but also for ourselves and this is a key part of what happens when we're judging. Most of the time we find ourselves judging ourselves, and that is often more harshly than we judge other people. So if we see ourselves judging others really harshly, then we know we probably have quite a lot of self-forgiveness that's going to come into the game as well. So what might be a simple process for you to move through to find forgiveness? We've already talked about the behaviours, the thoughts that you might be having, the emotional states you might find yourself in that give you a clue that it's time to move towards forgiveness. And we've already established we want to know who the players are. So that means you need to understand the story that you are currently telling yourself that needs forgiveness and who these people are, how this story is damaging you, like what impact is it having on your personal experience? Because forgiveness is basically you holding that heaviness. It's the individual holding that pain, holding that anguish, holding that anger. And so you need to really know your story, really honor your feelings, really give account for those feelings and see the impact of this story that it has on you so that you can see where it's stopping you from connecting to your life more fully. And you may need to deal with your well-being needs. You may need to get therapy. You will probably need to get support and revisit this story several times it needs to be expressed, it needs to be heard, and that is a really important part of the process. However, we don't want to get stuck in just telling the story, because when we get stuck in telling the story, we're getting fix it, fixed in that one position again, right? And we can become opinionated, we can get nitpicking, and all of those things can perpetuate. So what we then want to do is be willing to see it in you, and that's a really important step, is just to be willing to see something in you, to open yourself up to a new perspective, to see that there is something else that might support you as a different viewpoint. And then you're gonna move through what other perspectives, what understandings there might be of this situation. Whether it's that you believe in multiple lives and karma could be playing out on multiple levels, or that you just don't know all of the scenarios in another person's life as to how karma may play out for them. But we wanna know that you know, the good and the bad, the consequences of our actions play out at a much bigger scale than we often get to see. It's not a straightforward, I give you five pounds and you give me for, and you give me the coffee back. It is that I might do something for you and someone else might give them the thing back. So you might never see the impact in terms of karma. So we have to understand that we do not see, we do not understand the full picture of how good and bad is being weighed out. And so therefore, if you can't know all of the stories and you can't know all of the details, you can't know all of the versions, just having that open heart and curiosity to what may be can start to bring in different teachings and different gifts for you. And this is where we move towards reframing the story. 
there may be no right or wrong of what happened. There can be many versions and throughout your life you may retell the story in so many ways as you keep learning and shifting and unfolding and discovering new perspectives in your own life. And this is how we can see that we can lift and change our vibration by each time delving a little deeper into what else is there to forgive so that we can clear and cleanse our energetic state to be in a higher place of compassion and understanding of others. And that removes us more swiftly from that place of judging others and judging ourselves. And in that way, we might understand and be able to give greater companionship to others when they are in depths of struggle. And that includes to yourself. A really beautiful practice, if you're not quite sure if you're ready for diving into all of these steps, is to do the unhappiness pet meditation that we use in Law of Attraction. There are many other versions in different lineages that you might use, but this is where we embrace a loving connection of unconditional love towards something that is hurting, that is sad, that is sore, that is ugly and unwanted and undesired, but has a need and is like itching and itching to be loved and to be accepted. And so you're welcome to use the unhappiness pet meditation that's here on the YouTube channel to support you with deepening into a soft way of connecting to forgiveness, or you can try those four steps and move yourself towards forgiveness with a different way of telling your stories. Let me know how your forgiveness goes and do feel free to connect into, into the Embody Life Sanctuary if you'd love to get a greater support with the community around you. It's a beautiful way to really help open those perspectives is to ask other people what they might think of a scenario and also to extend their compassion and support to hold you as you move through this phase towards a greater acceptance of love and light in your life. Have a most wonderful month and I'd love to see you soon at one of the other live events or at our Embody Life Sanctuary. Much love.